Apologies for that shockingly grotesque clip, but hey, if you manage not to throw up or hold your crotch in agonizing pain, then congratulations. You just mentally prepared yourself for all the wonderfully unpleasant material yet to come. Hi, I'm Matt Hardy, and welcome to Let's Talk It Out, the show where I discuss controversial topics in today's society. Today, we're going to be looking at the effects of violent video games, or more importantly, whether or not they even have an effect on us in the first place. So, should these violent video games really be a cause of concern? Let's talk it out. The video mania, according to Walter Lowe, who wrote a Playboy article about it, goes beyond mere passion. The games certainly are conducive to, obs to obsessive behavior. And speaking of video games, that might be the first thing that your children go after as we approach the summertime. War turned into a game. There's an international outcry against it. <laughs> Older men were using Grand Theft Auto 3 as a murder and carjacking simulator. It is some of the most horrific senselessly violent stuff you've ever seen. F*** yourself! Okay, so video games are definitely violent, there's no denying that. For years, gamers have been experiencing an industry that thrives, expands and markets itself with the guarantee of immersing in what are often acts of violence. But is that really the case? Are video games nothing more than an adolescent and increasingly violent form of escapism? I've never thought video games were violent. Oh, you f idiot! Today's games are different from the ones created during the media's inception in the 1970s. No longer are games represented by a limited number of blocky pixels imitating characters and environments. Now we have fully believable worlds in high definition and motion captured characters with individual personalities and customization. There's even been evidence that video games can be beneficial to a person's development. There's such a variety of games out there that can teach you different things. Pattern recognition, hand-eye coordination, and even patience. Some more casual games have even been shown to relieve people from stress and physical pain. Oh wow, games I grew up with. It is quite a hard one because when I was little, I used to I used to play wrestling games on my PlayStation yeah. One, and I used to always mimic things like yeah, Stone Cold Stone Art, like on my brother <laughs> and sister. I remember playing Street Fighter when I was God, I must have only been about 10, 11, something like that. And my brother would always laugh if I lost, and usually that'd end up result in a fight. He'd be like Hadouken. <laughs> no, I mean I I played sort of like. The old Grand Theft Autos, Halo, Call of Duty growing up, but I mean, I, I don't know, I'm not a very aggressive person. I might have punched a wall every now and then, but that's about it. Well, you had Super Smash Bros. That was pretty violent, but I don't think it had great, you know, effect on my life. Doom was one of the first games I, I ever played um, because it was on PC. Uh, a demo had come out in the early 90s. Um, and I just played it because I saw my dad playing it and I, and I thought it was quite cool. When I was younger, I, I also played a lot of fighting games. Mm -hmm. I played like, Tekken 3, Street Fighter, and like wrestling. And to be fair, I probably did like try and imitate that on my brother, but, but we, we always knew. We never like actually hit each other. Um, I'd say when I was younger, I didn't really know if, whether or not it was real life because mm. I was just watching it and because I'd watched it on the telly and yeah, played the yeah, game of it. I didn't think that the consequences would ever be real. Not necessarily the violence of the game made me violent. I think more than anything that sort of, you know, the rise in blood pressure and everything else that it probably causes, you know, heart rate and things like that from the sort of stress really, I suppose, that it puts in your body or excitement. I think video games do sort of influence people. I mean, you know, GTA, sort mm -hmm. of games like that. I mean, you see a lot of kids getting very aggressive now mm -hmm. and I think games like that don't really help at all. It's weird how many uh, video games are based on combat mm -hmm. and fighting and like military stuff. But then again, how, how many like modern sports yeah. are like me metaphors for like combat and yeah. war? I think things with combat games is kind of an adrenaline rush, yeah. knowing that you've just been able to do what you've done, but on yeah. the game... and beat another person. Yeah. Even some of the like 
what you'd call family friendly platform has had little bits of, of violence in them even something like a game uh, like the Crash Bandicoot games you would have to sort of kill enemies you know but you know you just kind of jump on them and they'd vanish you know but you're still you're kind of killing them to make it so it's fun mm -hmm. to kill um, Call of Duty is like a very war zone oriented game there are some games out there like Hitman and stuff like that that just make it fun Double kill. Multi-kill, mega-kill, killing spree, monster kill, first kill, holy sh**. I think a lot of the mainstream media kind of do look down on the gaming culture uh, purely because they don't understand a lot of it. Uh, now, I'm not a particularly like massive gamer or, or anything like that. Um, but every time I see a GTA come out or a, you know any video game with uh, any kind of like horror or criminal kind of connotations, you know politicians come out and, and rip it to pieces without actually seeing it for, for what it is as a piece of a piece of art almost. People don't want to hear that. Oh, we don't know why he did why he went out and killed all these people. People don't want that. People want closure. They want to be able to point the finger and go, oh, you know, he done it because it was a video game or it was a TV or it was a film or, you know, they want that. They don't want, the, you know, the press to release, oh, we don't know why he done it. You know, maybe he was having a bad day at work. You know, they, the people don't like that. They like closure on things. See, no, I think it's the opposite. I think we should be pointing the finger at games and films and things like that because they're the reason why some kids are going um, as they're old to to do these sort of things because they've grown up with it. I don't think you should ever, ever let a game take over your whole life. No. I understand people become, a, not well, not so much obsessed, but in some cases it is, where they feel like they have to constantly play the game over and over and mm. over, but they don't have to act out what happens in the game. Personally, I think if you are influenced by a game mm. in such a way, then you should, you, you definitely have to have some sort of mental problem. Mm -hmm. Because I, I feel people people don't realise how many different kinds of mental illnesses there are. To have something like that that affects you, you kind of have to let it affect you. They're not going to blame themselves. Um, and especially like families, they're not going to go, oh yeah, there was something wrong with him. They're going to go, oh, is that a violent video game? They're going to push towards another reasoning. Um, and that's what we will always do. You can like up an age rating on a game as much as you want. Somehow a kid's still going to get a hand of it. Sure. Like an older brother or parents who think they're all right with it. If a parent thinks their child is sort of mentally ready to play Call of Duty or sure. GTA or something like that, then, you know, why not? If you don't like the piece of text after looking at it all and you still have those opinions, absolutely fine, but just make sure you look at the whole thing rather than, um, you know, just reading about, you know, stuff like prostitutes or the carjacking or the, you know, mass murder and bank robberies and so on. You know, don't just look at those in isolation. Look at it as a whole. So what's the conclusion we can come to here? Is there even one? Now we have games that can stand next to some of the greatest films that have been important, influential pieces of art, stories that challenge the modern stereotypes and prejudices. Whenever you take extreme examples of something and point a finger at the nearest potential culprit you can blame without any substantial evidence, all you end up doing is trivialising tragic events and removing attention away from what we should really be focusing on, honouring the victims. That's my two cents on it. That's only my opinion. In the end, everyone's going to have their own individual outlook on controversial topics, and so they should. Just make sure you know what you're talking about before you start pointing a finger. Until next time, this has been Let's Talk It Out. See ya!